What's up, guys? Lo-Fi Week. I'm DJ Av, and shout out to Mr. Different for this suggestion for this tutorial. We're going to learn how to make lo-fi drum kits in FL Studio. Uh, this is not the first time I've done a drum kit tutorial. I will have the information in the description box just in case there's other things you want to learn. So, and the reason why we're doing that is because of these guys right here, which are, will also be in the description box. And this is MXX Audio. Shout out to them. I know them very well. Thank you so much, guys, for, you know, the opportunity to working with you guys, too, as well. But this is my interpretation of their technique. So we're going to press F9 in FL Studio. That brings up the mixer. And we're going to turn off the Fruity Limiter because we don't need that in the chain. If you don't have the Fruity Limiter, don't worry about it. It's not important in this tutorial. But what is important is having a lo-fi plug-in. You might have many of them. I, again, have different videos about lo-fi plugins but this is the one i'm going to use desimort 2. i think it's the the most refined out of all lo-fi plugins and we're going to select a preset here my preset that i'm going to use because i want 12 bit drums i want really crunchy drums so i'm going to use the sp 1200 12 bit it's not the only preset that, that will give you that but yeah it is for now so the next thing I'm going to do here, and I'm going to make sure that uh, this overhead is not going to block you guys' view so you can see that. All right. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift-E. Shift-E will pull up Edison. That's the shortcut for Edison. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off record and that because we're not using that for right now. And then we're going to change this to on input. And... Now, we're going to listen to a drum break real quick. And before I do that, I'm going to select my my audio interface. Now you can see my voice running through it. Now let's listen to that. So we're going to go into my turntable, and we're going to listen to a drum break. So keep, keep that in mind when you're listening to this when we're editing the drum. So this was this. So this free sauce here. PVD Breaks, Volume 2, Royalty-Free royalty Drums. Uh, MXX Audio, by the way, plays their drums. So they have drum sets and stuff. So, yeah, I'm not knocking their technique. So, yeah. Anywho, we're going to pull up the overhead here because we're going to record the drums in. And I want you guys to see that. And... Okay, so now we have everything to, all together. I'm going to just select none because I don't want anything on there. And you'll see my voice go away on the screen. So pulling it up, we're going to listen to what, what we got. Press play. You see the drums are more crunch, uh, crunchy. <laughs> country. Now we have the crunchiness. Mm, I might just go ahead and record those again. I'm going to adjust the resample in Desimort. And I am going to go back into Edison. And I'm going to just press control. Uh, go into Edison. Make sure that you select it. Pr con uh, press control X. Holy shit. And <laughs> that will delete everything. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat the process that we just went through. See if it's crunchy. I want it as crunchy as possible. Now I'm going to select and count. I do a count so I can do the drums. I need this. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control X to get rid of the extra. Oh no, I don't. I don't I'm not gonna need that. I'm gonna do a count in one. Right here, it's gonna be a little difficult to see. What you can do to counterbalance that is, of course, normalize. 
Then you draw. Oh, rest in <laughs> R.I.P. Head Crones. Right, my bad. So I want to make sure that I have a three count, uh, a two count. Blah. And by, by that, I'm just going to loop. Okay, that's a little too, I cut too much off. I think that might be a little, has a little bit of a break in between it. Maybe a little, uh, cut that. Uh, yeah, well, I'll roll with that. Uh, so, I guess the next thing you're going to do right here is just, I, I just, I want you to make sure that you go to 16-bit. It's important because if you're going to sell drum kits, you're going to need a 16-bit because some DAWs do not take 32-bit afloat files. Ableton does. They, they take 32-bit afloat, but things like Logic X and whatever, I, I've heard people complain about that. So 16-bit will work for here. It might be different now. I don't know. So, of course, saving the file, if you want to save what you got to have your uh, lo-fi drum, you're going to go and press the save button. The save button will pull up. You, you'll you probably have a favorite folder or something like that that you already saved your drums in. I got TTS Raw Drums. And for some reason, there's already stuff in here. But I'm just going to name this Lo-Fi Lo-fi drum. Well, no. Matter of fact, <laughs> a better thing if you're making drum kits is to put like some type of small acronym in the beginning. And I think I'm saying that wrong. But uh, yeah, small acronym. I don't know. Just make up something. Look. And then just type in like a name. YOLO. <laughs> Then little underscore and what it is. Like I use like maybe, you know, for 808, I put 808 at the end. It is not an 808. For a break, I put BR, you know, CL for a clap or et cetera. So this is a BR, a break or whatnot. I'm going to use what I what FL loves. That's the Slicer X shit. All right, so we have Slice X open, and of course, it already sliced everything in there. I hate that about Slice X. So, next day I'll do, just play with some of the chops. And there you go. Lo-fi drum kit all together. Just rinse and repeat the process. We're done.